Well, the weekend is coming to a close, but that doesn't mean we have to end here. So today, as you know, we're going to be doing three reviews. The first one is from Impact Wrestling with Final Resolution. This is the last pay-per-view of 2023 for Impact Wrestling before we jump ship to TNA. I'm so excited for that. But we do have a couple of championship matches taking place. The digital media and the tag team and other special matches. Then we move on across the Pacific to Japan for two shows. The first one is from Gleet with version X uh, with face off at Jinjuku face. There is no title opportunity here, but we do see some interesting matches taking place. And then we move on, of course, to the finals of World Tag League. But who will walk out as the winner? As you know, Bishimon has already won twice in two years. Last year and the year before that. Could they make it number three? We don't know. Or will it be, of course, Hikuleo and El Fantasmo G.O.D.? I'm so excited how this is going to turn out. And then, of course, we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are throwing out, who's booked, what matches are set, any wrestlers that have been signed or departing from the respective promotions, any injured wrestlers, the whole enchilada. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Leaded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J Rod here. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of daily reviews from various wrestling promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan. Mexico, Canada, Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to get our hands on. We also do some more news updates. If I'm unable to put it here, I can put it on a separate a video. And also, we also do cool stuff in here such as news update alerts on real timing, of course, the United Sayaka Watch and special episodes. But if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. Click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel. But if you also like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now, let's begin with Impact Wrestling with Final Resolution. As I said earlier... This is the last pay-per-view of Impact Wrestling of 2023 before we jump ship to TNA. Man, I have to say, I miss TNA. I've been, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the TNA stuff for a long time. When I got bored with WWE, that, that kind of gets me. But that's another conversation. But let's get started. Now, normally I don't do the kickoff shows, the count out to final resolution. So, But I'm going to do it anyway because this is the last one. Come on, guys. Why the F and not? Now, our first match, we have guys from, from, that I believe are from Canada. The first one is Jesse 5 or Jesse V, I don't know, against PCO. Now, I don't need to tell you that this match, how it goes. You probably can guess it in your wildest imaginations that the French-Canadian Frankenstein PCO was going to win. Of course, he applied the PCO salt. Just like that, it was over. But we do see a little interesting video uh, thing with Jake Something, who, as you know, um, he is excited for TNA. But someone had to spoil his moment, and that is those no good for nothing, one half of these guys, the good hands, Jason Hodge, who believes that he needs to shut up, that no one cares about him and all that. But just be careful what you wish for. 
Now, our next match, we have Jack Price versus Aiden Prince. Now, I don't know much about these guys, but I have been aware of this guy, Jack Price, who has appeared recently as the paper boy in those, um, you know, throwback shows that Impact Wrestling does, you know. You know what? I need to, I was going to ask this to more, but, you know, I, I'm going to see if I can try. If they're going to stop doing this or they're going to, you know, end it. I don't know. I, I would like to see that. But anyway, um, not much about these guys, but I did like how this one uh, turns out because uh, people don't like Jack Price. People were supporting Aiden Prince, but it was Jack Price with, uh, he did something where the referee did not see what he did. And then he applied a gut buster and it was over right from there and picked up the win. Now we do have an interview with Gia. Uh, talking with Trinity and Jordan Grace, as you all know, Jordan Grace is facing um, Trinity for the Impact Knockouts World Title. Now, of course, Trinity knows what she's getting herself into, but however, she did say that this is almost similar to her and Mickey James. If you guys remember, prior before Mickey James and Trinity, they were tag teaming, but of course. It's the same thing, but a different scenario. So that's something I think Trinity could see that in herself. But we'll see how they do when they face against Giselle Shaw and Deanna Perrazzo. Now, our last match involving the countdown to uh, final resolution, we have Sheldon Jean versus Frankie Kazarian. Of course, Frank Kazarian is an TNA original. I guess people are happy with the fact that he's involved in this again. But, of course, this was going to be his win when he applied the chicken... Wing crossface, one, two, three, it was over. Now, our opening match of the main card, we have the Impact World Tag Team titles. We have Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers as the challengers taking on the ABC, Ace Austin, and Chris Bay. And this was a very interesting matchup. Now, Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers, they're, they're not sure if they can trust each other. Now, keep in mind, Moose has a connection with both of these men. Eddie Edwards is an old friend of Moose, tag partner, until they turn it back on each other. But Moose told Myers, you can trust him. I trust this guy with my life. So basically, Brian Myers had to learn how to trust Eddie Edwards that maybe Moose is right. Because as you know, Moose is occupied with one thing, which is the, the world title. But however, they had to contempt with the ABC. But... Uh, things didn't go exactly Edwards and Myers planned because it ended with the one, two, sweet, just like that. It was over. They retained the titles. However, the ABC's sh uh, celebration was sh cut short with the arrivals of the former tag team champions. The guys that they beat for those titles were talking about the rascals and all this other stuff. So, you know, they're demanding their little rematch. And all this other stuff. Now, before the next ma next match, we have a little problem. Alicia Edwards ranting about how it's how things have been unfair with things not going her way. Same thing with Myers and Edwards. However, thank God for the deputy of authority, uh, Santino Morella, tried to lay down the law. So she decided. He decided. How about put you in a match against Jody Threat, which it happened. However, of course. They was going to play it out some scenarios. Of course, Edwards and Myers weren't getting involved, but they were ejected out. But it was, of course, um, <coughs> Jody Threat with the F416 that put away Alicia Edwards with the win. So let's see how much complaint does Alicia has to do in this scenario. Our next match, we have the Impact Digital Media title. Um, Tommy Dreamer defends it against Steiner. Uh, this was a very interesting match. Now, to be fair, I wasn't too pumped on this, but it was a pretty good match, not going to lie. But it was Tommy Dreamer that walked out as the victor when he applied the DDT, and it was done right there. Done deal. Now, we did see the Rascals attacked the ABC, feeling all good about it, but Santino Morella was not happy with what they did. However, no one was expecting Zachary Wentz to be there. But however, since the, the, the Rascals are complaining that they earned a rematch, all they had to do was ask, not try to go out and beat the ABC for a statement of that. But the best part took place, Santino decided, oh, well, how about this? 
you guys in a tag team match against Mike Bailey and a partner uh, out of my back pocket. So he had no clue who they're talking about until we saw what really happened. Apparently, uh, when uh, my, the Mike Bailey's partner was revealed, it's none other than Mustache Mountains Trent Seven. Now, you probably did not anticipate this. I did not anticipate this. Now, I did report this, uh, about this in the last episode, but I'll get to that. So, you probably wouldn't imagine how this was going to be. But, it was a fantastic match. However, like what we saw earlier, the Rascals attacked the ABC. The ABC weren't going to let this slide. But, good thing this distracted the Rascals enough for Bailey and Trent to deal with it. But, it was a great combination of the Burning Hammer and Ultima Weapon onto um, Zachary Wentz to uh, win the match. However, out of nowhere in the post-match, here comes Scott Demore talking about Mike Bailey, how he made a big impact, how much he signed him, and now he talks about Trent Seven, about you know him and his tag partner and all this other stuff. And he said that who uh, several years ago, someone was stupid enough to let him go. So he thought that it, since TNA is coming back, why not? So he asked him to sign. If he likes to sign, and of course he did. He actually used uh, Mike Bailey's sweaty back. And this was an announced. I put this in the in the report in the news updates in the last episode. But it's great. I have to say this could ele ele uh, elevate more, a little bit for TNA for 2024. So we'll see what happens. <coughs> now, our next match, Jason Hodge, as you know, all happy and sunshines and rainbow that he thinks that he's not gonna have a match with jake something boy he was wrong uh you know the old saying goes don't poke the bear well jason hodge was stupid enough to do that and that's exactly what he did he poked the bear and he paid for it when he got into the void by jake something so that says it all right there <laughs> now our next match, Moose and Rhino. Now, these two guys collided because, of course, Heath was getting himself involved in their in their business and all this other stuff. And Rhino, who is good friends with Heath, uh, got involved. However, uh, Moose ended up disqualifying himself. But Rhino said that he's not going to let this slide or let this go with just a DQ. So he decided that... He wants to turn this into a street fight. Moose wasn't going to go for it, but Santino Morella told him that it will be a street fight. However, if Moose doesn't fight, then he will lose an opportunity of the of the world title, which, of course, Moose cannot afford to lose. So he had to oblige to the whole thing. But just like any other street fight, it was pretty good. Two referees were knocked out, you know, the first and the re and the second. But it was, of course, a spear by Moose to Rhino. So now that this thing with Moose is done, now he can concentrate on the next big step, which is the world title. So it could possibly happen in Hard to Kill, I believe. So we will see. Now, our next match, I think this is the semifinal of the, of the thing. Yeah, it is the semifinal. Giselle Shaw, the quintessential diva versus the virtuosa. Diana, no, I mean, teaming up with the virtuosa Diana Prazo, they take on the juggernaut Jordan Grace and Trinity. I thought this was a very interesting. Now, keep in mind, we have seen an establishment between Shaw and Prazo already. However, the obvious question does tell can Grace and Trinity get along? That is a good point. There have been some good moments where you can tell they can coexist. Of course, there'll be some mishaps here and there but luckily in the end it was of course a very interesting win between trinity and joan and grace to win when they applied of course uh a combination of the full nelson bomb and the jackknife but however at the match when it was over when grace and trinity won giselle shaw was not happy but she put away the quit uh, uh diana prazo you know not happy with how things turned out for her, but this is how it resulted. Now, our main event is Josh Alexander teaming up with Zack Sabre Jr. taking on the Motor City Machine Guns. What a freaking match. You can tell 
you got technical aspect team versus a team that's been well recognized in the tag team division all over the world. But in the end, it was the C4 spike that put away um, Saban, giving, of course, uh, Zack Saber Jr. and Josh Alexander the win. I don't know what's going to happen next. But this will be a good opportunity for Josh Alexander to get back to the top. So we will see what happens this coming Thursday. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's move on with Gleet. Okay. Gleet version X. Face off. Now, this is like in Jujuku Face, a very interesting show. Um, there's no title matches except the main event features the Lidet UWF Rules Next Challenger match. Now, that is against someone who is an UWF fighting style um, fighter, that sort of thing. But we'll get to that. But we do see a bit of rivalries with certain wrestlers when it comes to, of course, the different factions like Bulk Orchestra, the Yans family. And all this, but we do have a lot of good matches, so let's get started. Our first one we have, of course, uh, this one was just recently on the 10th of December. We have the Yans family, um, consistent of Yusuke Kodoma and Takanori Ito. They take on Jun Toncho and Soma Wananabe. Now, I know that Soma Wananabe and tu Jun Tujo have teamed up, they have faced off each other, so basically, this is going to be a little interesting of a match, knowing that they are now. Uh, on the same team, but how would they coexist? How would they, um, how do I say this? Could surpass a team that's already been well established for many months, and I think that's the key thing. However, it was Ito with a, how do you say this, with a German suplex onto, I believe, on Jun Toncho and picked up the win. So that set, sets it all for everyone right there. Next up, we have a very interesting Royal Rumble match. We have fi a five-way Rumble match. So first, we have Masato Camino versus Galeno del Mal versus Jackson Harley Jackson versus Daisuke Sekimoto versus Aja Kong. Now, you probably would have imagined this or not. Off, there's only four men and one woman. And you probably can guess, don't tell me, don't tell me, J-Rod, that they attacked the uh, Aja Kong. Oh, yes, but uh, they all got a back fist, one by one. But unfortunately, um, it's an elimination match. The first, I cannot remember how the elimination match went down because like, I was more focused on other things on this one. But um, it was Galena Namal who picked up the win when he eliminated Masato Camino. I felt like, wow, I can't believe that Camino actually... Was so close, but <coughs> Galen and Amal won. Next up, we have a very interesting, um, how do I say, a six man tag match. Team number one, we have El Lindeman from Strong Hearts, Ise Onitsuka from the Yans family, and of course, the veteran Kaz Hayashi. They take on, uh, Members of the Black Generation International, consistent of Keishi Sato, Kotaro, Suzuki, and of course someone from another promotion um, from Secret Base, um, Hanaoka. So this is a very interesting dynamic between, of course, uh, BGI and Hana Hanaoka because they're not exactly on the same team. But it seems like he can try to get along. But however, that wasn't the case either. I mean, Il Lindemann and Onisuka, Onisuka, they knew each other very well because they were part of the same... T well, Onisuka used to be a member of Strong Hearts. I just don't know what happened if he was kicked out or he left on his own accord. But teaming up with a veteran set the whole thing. But in the end, it was Il Lindemann with a German suplex. Where, of course, he fa um, faces... Uh, um, he puts, who, who was in the German suplex? On Saito. However, during the promo, this is what happened. As you may we know or not, we have members of the AEW roster. More consistently, Colt Cabana and Brandon Culler will be making their way. So it looks more like Il Lindemann is interested in teaming up with those guys. So he will team up with, of course, his tag partners of the night, Onitsuka and Hayashi. However, 
Apparently, they needed third partner, and they act, and apparently someone volunteered to be Cutler and Colt Cabana's tag partner. And you guys are not going to believe who it is? It's Jacket Time. That's right. Ikamanjiro, or he's known now in Japan, Kuroshio, Tokyo, Japan. So he, in the other hand, is now teaming up with Brandon Cutler and Colt Cabana. So I have to say, this is going to be a very interesting match. This will take place by the end of the month, I believe, but we'll see. I'm, I'm so excited for that. Now, our next match, we have the Yoshis taking on. We have AOI taking on Michiko. Now, this match ca uh, came into fruition after AOI loses in a tag team match against Unagi and um, Itsuki Aoki when she teamed up with Michiko. Now, AOI has been determined to finally surpass Unagi because... Michiko hated her for ever appearing in Glee. However, she put herself in a in an exile. Then she uh, recruited people to form the Diamond Egoist. But because of that, I think Michiko felt that maybe AI wasn't strong as she thought she was. She couldn't even defeat Unagi. I mean, Michiko can defeat the partners that Unagi um, teamed up with. But however, in this case... AOI somehow has now grown up. She defeated Michiko when she applied a modified armbar. But I don't know what she said, but I'm going to presume uh, the way it acted is like that probably AOI felt that she doesn't need her anymore now that she has grown so much, not to mention she is the current queen of, uh, queen of the GTO champion and all this. And Michiko felt so alone and out of nowhere... Someone reached out to her, and that is her former friend, and then, of course, her protege, Yukari Osakawa. It's kind of interesting that Yukari hated her for abandoning her, but now that she's all alone, it's like she's willing to help her in any way possible. So, seems Michiko accepted her hand, and uh, who knows how things are going to go, but we'll see. Now... Our next match is the ba battle of the leaders of two different units. We have the leader of Folk Orchestra, Ruchi Kawakami, and the leader of BGI, Kaito Ishida. Now, Ishida, ha since arriving, has been determined to prove once and for all why BGI are the true conquerors of Glee. Now, Bl a Bulk Orchestra has been at the top of its game, but now that Ishida's there, it changes. But man, Ishida really brutalized them, not to mention countering every move the Kawakami even tried to pull it, but however, um, he was no match for the German suplex, and it was over right from there. But however, Ichida uh, comes out, and she, he called this one dude, I cannot remember his name, but he is part of Strong Hearts. I don't know what's his fascination towards him, but it looks more like he's looking for a, a match against him for some odd reason. But I wouldn't be surprised if Ishida convinces him that he's better off siding with him and Black Generation International. I think that's one of my assumptions right there. Now, our next match, we have a very interesting six-man tag team match. We have the uh, three members of Borg Orchestra, consistent of Kazuma Sakamoto, Chuck Shimatani, and uh, Hayato Tamura. Now, they face against Voodoo Murders, more specifically the Saito brothers, June and Ri. They team up with T-Hawk. Now, it's the champions versus challengers, to be exact. Um, of course, um, uh, Tamra is challenging for the, the G-Rex title. I don't know about the other members of Bulk Orchestra. I mean, they did lost last time to them. But it's very interesting how this is going to be. A uh, pretty good match, I'm not going to lie. It was very impressed. But it was, of course... Um, T-Hawk with the Knight Rider on to check Chimatani to pick up the win. Our next match is our main event. It's the Lid Debt UWF title next challenger tournament finals. Um, we have Min Minoru Tanaka versus Tetsuya Ishii. Now, Ishii is a very young wrestler. He has grown so much from day one. But however, he was no match for the veterancy of Minoru Tanaka when he applied a armbar forcing him. So now he will be challenging for the UWF, um, the Ledet UWF Championship. Uh, I think Fujita Jr. has that one. So we will see when, when that get um, be announced. I'm so excited for that match. I think that's pretty much it with this one. I believe it's time for 
our final review, and that is New Japan Pro Wrestling World Tag League. Okay. New Japan Pro Wrestling World Tag League. We're now at the finals of this tournament. Now, as I said before, who will walk out as this year's winner? Will it be G.O.D., Hikuleo, and El Fantasmo, the current New Japan Strong Openweight Tag Team Champions? These guys have been on a roll recently, and they have been determined why they are the team that people need to pay attention and be behind. Or will it be the tag team who has won World Tag League two years straight? We're talking about the 2022 winners and 2021 winners as well. Bishimon, consistent of Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto. Now, a lot of things will be discussed about this. But for right now, let's go from the very beginning. Starting with the pre-show, the Frontier Zone Tag Team Match. We have a couple of wrestlers that are from not in Japan. Um, we have... as. Um, a Zonan teaming up with this guy named Ko Kodai Nozaki. Now, these guys are from a promotion I call Kishu Pro Wrestling. Um, not one of the most popular promotions, but it is a very good independent promotion. Seen it myself. They take on the young line Ole um, Oleg Bolton and Ryusuke Taguchi. Of course, there's going to be some really interesting fun facts on this one. But, however, it was Taguchi with the Kiddo Clutch. On to um, uh, Zoman and uh, picked up a very, a, a very good win. I have to say, very fun. Now, let's jump in with our main card matches on this one. First match, we have a six-man tag match. We have Master Wato teaming up with Soberano Jr. and Alantis Jr. They take on TMDK, Kose Fujita, Shane Hayes, and Mikey Nichols. Now... I wouldn't be surprised if Soberano Jr. and Atlantis can get along. If you guys remember clearly, prior before returning to Japan, Master Wato spent his excursion years after graduating as a young lion in CMLL. So it's no surprise these two were probably part of are in that promotion. They probably knew each other. So it did fit pretty well for them. Now, I ask myself, I know that TMDK are a well-established team. They can get along well, but can Wato get along with Soberano Jr. and Alantis Jr.? That's the key part, but it seems like they were able to do so. But unfortunately for TMDK, they were unable to pick up the win because Costa Fujita ended up on the wrong side of the Suten Ta uh, Taku German, picking by Wato onto Fujita, and it was over right from there. Next up, we have a very interesting six-man tag match. We have Bullet Club consistent of Jack Bonza, Balak Fale, Alex Coughlin, and Gabe Kidd. Of course, Gabe Kidd going out to the audience, flipping them, saying he doesn't give a damn what he thinks of them because he is full of himself, saying that he is the future ace. But you're going to have a very interesting combination of tag team on their opponents. And we have Monster Sauce consistent of Alex Zane and Alex Archie. Uh, Lance Archer, they team up with Minoru Fujita, I mean, Yuji, uh, hold on, Minoru Suzuki and Yuji Nagata. I have to say, what a match, even though this is the thing that really interesting. It appears that, you know, they can try to get along with Yuji Nagata, but don't forget, it was Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer that knew each other very, very well, and that sets the whole thing well. But I did like how it is because apparently I feel Minoru Suzuki, not only he can get along with Lance Archer, he could get along with Alex Zane. I just hope Alex Zane doesn't give him too many tacos from Taco Bell. But it was the monster sauce. No, no, the picked up the win when they applied the blackout sauce onto, I believe, who was it? Oh, yes, yeah, onto Banza, giving them the win. But when they try to give each other's fist bump, well, Nagata was the one who was left out. Poor Nagata. But of course, Yuji uh, Minoru Suzuki doesn't like him. They don't. They can't stand each other. I mean, he wanted to punch him in the face throughout the entire tournament. But it is what it is. But it's a pretty good match. I loved it. Next up, we have the United Empire, consistent of Calman Newman, 
um, Hinari, Jeff Cobb, and Great Khan. They take on Oscar Lobe, Yudo Nakashima's, and the members of Chaos, Yano and Ishii. Now, you probably can guess that there will be some of the factors of this. We have two young lions, which, of course, are the ones who are the less experienced of the team. But, however, you probably can guess that Ishii has a bit of a feud with Hinari. You probably think that was going to end with him. Nope, but unfortunately, Lobe ended up on the wrong side of the Tour of the Islands by Jeff Cobb, resulting for great the United Empire winning. Now, our next stop, we have Tiger Mast and Shota Umino taking on the House of Torture. Now, Sho was supposed to be, uh, was teaming up with Ren Narita. Ren Narita wasn't there, but he showed up at the last minute playing dirty tricks on Umino, resulting of a face buster by uh, Ren Narita and Ti onto Tiger Mask, allowing for Narita to pick up the win, uh, for Sho to pick up the win by a pinfall. And of course, Umino hasn't forgotten how he betrayed him, but he will get his revenge against him. Now, speaking of those pieces of garbage, the House of Torture. They had another match, but this time it's Kanemaru and Takanashi and Evil taking on Tomoaki Hamna, and they got, um, Rohe Oiwa, and Keito um, Kiyomiya. Now, of course, Evil and Kiyomiya, I mean, um, as you know, there's been a few, they had a very interesting thing going on between them. But of course, we're going to see the other members of House of Torture. We're talking about Narita, Dick Togo. And show getting involved. That's the whole point. But it was everything evil onto um, Hamna that picked up the win and the beatdown. And Shota Umino showed up. I wouldn't be surprised if Umino and Kato Umia and will team up to take on the House of Torture. That is something that could happen, but we will see. Next up, we have the Gates of Agony. Toa Leona and Bishop Khan taking on um, the duo of. Tanahashi and Okada. You know this is going to be a good thing for Gates of Agony if they pick up a win against them. That has always been one thing. If you pin um, Okada, you probably, as you know, uh, the Gates of Agony are the current ROH six-man tag team champions. They could challenge for the Never Open with six-man tag team champions, but nope, it did not. It was, of course, Okada with the Rainmaker. One, two, three. It was over right from there. Next up, this is our semi-final main, um, semi-main event. We have Lij Bushi. Uh, so, um, well, Zanaka is not an official member. We have Yoda Suji, Shingo Tagagi, and of course the boss. Tetsuya Naito. They take on just five guys: Taka Michinuku, Doiki. Yuya Uemura, uh, Taichi, and Sonata, the current IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Now, keep in mind, certain factors of this match plays out pretty well. Suji and y Yuya Uemura go way back. They were part of the same class. They can't even stand each other. Same thing what we see with Narita and Umino. But, of course, we cannot forget the fact Naito has a date with a destiny with Sonata at, at Wrestle Kingdom this coming January. So, I think that sets it off. But it was, of course, in this match, Bushi who picked up the win by applying the MX on Taka Michinuku. However, in the commentary section, uh, Hiromu Takahashi was doing commentary. He shows up in the ring. And you guys remember, if you guys remember what happened, how they voted a member in with Titan, they actually put the fist bumps in the air. You know? And of course, now it's official. Zondakan Jr. is a member of. Lij, so that means they have two wrestlers who are of Hispanic origins, are the only ones. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they recruit more Spanish people because you got to remember the name Los Ingobernables is from Mexico. But yeah. Now our main event is the finals of World Tag League. We have God, El Fantasmo, and Hikuleo taking on Bishiman, Yoshihashi, Hiroki Goto. Man. This was a bloody murder, well, not bloody, but more of a brutality to the fullest to see who is more hungrier to win this year. As I said before, can Bushimam pull off a three-year-in-a-row win, winning last year and the year before that, or will it be G.O.D.? That is crazy, but there are bigger fa factors here. 
Hikuleo. He's a big, big man. How do you do that? You try to take out from the legs. But unfortunately, they managed to separate Hikuleo long enough for them to take out, out El Phantasma with the Naraku. One, two, three, it was over. Now, as you know, there is a certain rule when it comes to winning uh, um, tournaments like these. If the champions win, what do they do? Simple. They nominate their opponents that they want to challenge. And you wouldn't believe who they picked. If you can guess right, I applaud you. If you have seen it, then you know the answer. Those who don't know, I'll tell you. They picked G.O.D. And that's not all. For Wrestle Kingdom, winner takes all. So that means the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships and the New Japan Strong Openweight Tag Team titles will be on the line. So the obvious thing is, will Bushima walk away as double champions? Or will Hikuleo and be the ones to walk away as double champions? We will wait to see. I have to say I'm, I'm going to be biased to be honest with you when it comes to it. Now we've seen how when it comes to champions to nominate their opponents, this is great. So uh, we'll see what happens to the rest of the year of 2023 before we head to Wrestle Kingdom. But for right now, I think we're done with every review we have. I believe let's move on with our last and final thing, news updates. <laughs> Now for our news updates. As you know, we got our upcoming shows for 2024. Let's begin with the one that will happen near the end of January of 2024. West Coast Pro with Ill Mattered. Now they announced for many wrestlers to be there. These are ones I've been unaware that they have announced they will participate. We have the tag team duo Beefcake with Tank, um, Calvin Tankman and Beef, La Estrella. Juicy Fanau and Journey Fatu, the, known as the South Pacific Savages. El Kukui. Uh, Los Vipers. One called Manders. Our current uh, West Coast Pro Women's Champion, Takumi Iroha. And of course, our current West Coast Pro Champion, uh, Char uh, Charlie, uh, Starboy Charlie. Now, as you know, we have already uh, an upcoming NOAA event at the start of January of 2024. On January the 2nd, we already have the announced for Go Shiozaki. He takes on Satoshi Kojima. That's going to be a good match to enjoy. And, I've, and I mentioned this before, Kato um, Masa Kitamiya issued a challenge against Ishii. But I did state it, where is this going to take place? In a New Japan ring or a NOAA? Well, it looks like my answer has been a answered, and that is at a Noah ring. So he will be heading to Pro Wrestling Noah for that. Now, for some other things that you guys need to know, other uh, announcements and reports on this one, um, Tokyo Shoot Pro Wrestling on the Wrestle Universe show, they have released the, uh, late, uh, one of the most interesting match uh, shows called Aquarium Pro Wrestling at the Hake... Um, Hakijima Sea Paradise, which is an aquarium. So you, if you guys have Russell Universe, go check it out. So I'm trying to find a way if I can watch it, even if I don't have Russell Universe. But I'll let you guys know. Now, as you know, I reviewed Impact Wrestling. Apparently, a friend of Trent Seven has reacted to uh, what he saw. He said this on a tweet. BCC, which stands for British Strong Style. Movement? Probably. So he thinks that we could see an expansion of the British Strong style in Impact Wrestling. So that looks more like it's common. So we will see. Now recently, if you guys know, Dolph Ziggler has announced that he will be heading in January to um, Puerto Rico to participate for w World Wrestling Council, which is uh, the, one of the owners, you may know him as Cologne, uh, who is Cardio's father. So yeah, so he will be there too. I can't wait. Now, speaking of Impact Wrestling, as I mentioned this before, Diana Perrazzo, as you know, had her match at 
a final resolution. It was reported by Fightful S Select that this was her last official match in Impact. Now that she's stepping as a free agency. Now, she did not renewed her contract with Impact Wrestling. So, basically, we don't know where she'll go. We will see what happens until then. Now, Keno, as you know, is the current JHC Heavyweight Champion. He talked about how he wants to lead a revolution in Noah and um, be the main eventer. But he also said that he wants to um, reform Noah. So, he's very passionate about that. So, I'm looking forward to that. Now, finally, as you all know, we did see what happened with the destruction of the IWGP United States and the UK titles that David Finley destroyed. The chairman, named um, Suga Bayashi, has announced that they, the, the, the US and the UK titles will be retired. However, a new championship has been announced. It's called the IWGP Global Champ Heavyweight Championship. This will be this title will be inaugurated on July 4th in that triple threat match between Will Ospreay, John Moxley, and David Finley. Now, if you guys don't remember what happened, let me explain what happened. Will Ospreay, who has some unfinished business with John Moxley, as you know, uh, defeating um, Shota Umino to retain the titles, basically, um, there was like the, it looks like the direction between Moxley and Osprey was going to take place at Wrestle Kingdom. But however, David Finley's like, nope, no, 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 a-holes. Not on my watch. It's not going to happen. So he wants to prove once and for all. So he feels that Will Osprey has done, is done being in New Japan. And he looks at Moxley, hey, Mox, this is my ring. No one told you to step into it. So we're going to see what happens until then. So that match is already set. So I'm looking forward to see who will be the first winner for this title. But right now, I think we're very much done with everything else. I say it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. Well, it's Monday. Uh, I'm going to try to wing it, but I'm considering watching uh, the All Japan shows of, that are still part of the Real World Tag League and the Junior Battle of Glory. I uh, haven't seen day six, seven, eight, and nine, and ten. Five days. I'm considering doing that. I haven't decided what else I'm going to do afterwards if I'm going to do it. But we'll see. I'm going to try to not overextend myself from this one. So I think this is pretty much it, what we have. Um, so, yeah. So until then, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So. Goodbye, Mwah. and have a nice day. Bang.